Having run the analysis, we are now able to see our periods and mode shapes. This is done by clicking Display, Show Deformed Shape. Modal is fine. Click OK. To see our periods in action so that we can verify they are in plane, click Start Animation. This mode is out of plane, so use the arrows to toggle to the next mode. This is our first mode in plane, even though the model shows it as mode 2. We can see in the upper left of the screen that the period is 1.7 seconds. You can toggle through the rest of the modes with the arrows. To see our outputs in table form, Click Display, Show Tables, click Structural Output, Modal Information, Periods and Frequencies, click OK. These can be easily exported to Excel or other spreadsheet software. Click Done. Now we will apply loads to our structure, but first we must unlock the model. Click Unlock. This deletes our results from previous runs. Click OK. Click Define. Load Patterns. Here we can define a new load pattern. Name it Earthquake, change the type to Quake and multiplier to zero. Click Add New Load Pattern. Earthquake has been added to the list. Click OK. Select the fifth story far left joint. Click Assign, Joint Loads, Forces. Select Earthquake from the drop down. In the global X direction, input 187.3 kips. Make sure the units are correct. Press OK. The force has been added. Next, repeat this process for the remaining floors. This floor will have a 134.3 kip force applied to it. Press OK. This floor will have an 84.1 kip force applied to it. Press OK. and the last will have a 37.7 kip force applied to it. The earthquake forces have been applied to the frame. Next, define a load pattern for live loads. Name it Live. Select Live as Type. Click Add New Pattern. Click OK. Next we'll assign dead and live loads to the frame. Per ASCE 7, we'll use a tributary width of 10 feet and an 80 PSF dead load. This yields an 800 pounds per foot distributed dead load on the beams. Similarly, the live load will be 500 pounds per foot. First select the members that the loads will be applied to, in this case the beams.
click Assign, Frame Loads, Distributed. Dead is good, and change the units to pounds and feet. The load is 800 pounds per foot. The gravity direction is OK as this is downward in SAP. Press OK. Once we change the units, we can see that an 800 pound per foot gravity load has been applied. Next, we'll apply the live loads. Select the beam once again. Click Assign, Frame Loads, Distributed. Change the name to Live. Be sure you're in pounds and feet. Insert 500 in the load box. Gravity is OK, so press OK. The load has been applied. Next, we will assign load combinations per ASCE 7. Click Define, Load Combinations. Click Add New Combination. The name Combo 1 is OK. This will be 1.2 dead plus 1.6 live. Leave dead in the box and change multiplier to 1.2. Click Add. Select Live for name and change the multiplier to 1.6, then click Add. Press OK. Load Combo 1 shows up in the list. Click Add New Combo. This load combo will be 1.2 dead. plus 1.0 live. plus 1.0 earthquake. Press OK. The next combo will be 1.2 dead plus 1.0 live minus 1.0 earthquake. Press OK and OK again. Let's run the analysis. Press the play button. Our load patterns have been added to the list of cases to run. Click Run Now. Let's look at the deformed shape based on the combinations we just defined. Select Combo 1 from the drop-down, which represents the 1.2 dead plus 1.6 live being applied. We can see displayed how the frame deforms under just live and dead loads. Click Display, Show Forces and Stresses, Frame Cables and Tendons. Combo 1 is OK. This will display axial force, shear, and moment diagrams. Select the moment in the 3-3 direction and press OK. SAP plots the moment diagrams for the members experiencing moments in this direction. The same can be done for each load combination. Click Display, Show Forces and Stresses, Frames, Cables, and Tendons. Select Combo 2 
and click OK. SAP displays the earthquake moment diagram. SAP will give us displacements, which we can check against the ASCE 7 displacement requirements. Click Display, Show Deformed Shape, select Combination 2, and press OK. To get the displacements to read in inches, change the units to kips and inches. Drag the cursor over the joints where you wish to know the displacement. U1 is our displacement in the X direction. Here on the 5th floor it's 3.8 inches. On the 4th floor it's 3.1 inches. On floors 3 and 2 the displacements are 1.9 and 0.9 respectively. This can be done in the 2D view by selecting the view, clicking Display Show Deform Shape, Combo 2 is OK, so press OK. The displacement should be the same as before. To see the displacements in table form, click Display, Show Table, Joint Outputs, Displacements. Press OK. SAP has tabulated all of the values for the joint displacements for each load combination. Looking through these displacements, we need to know what joint we wish to find the displacement for. We should also know what load case we need the displacements for. For example, this is the displacement of joint 6 for load combination 1, and it's 0 inches. This table can easily be exported to a spreadsheet such as Excel. There you can select the joints for which you would like to see the displacements. This concludes our simple 2D frame.